The images we're seeing out of Ukraine are making us nauseous. Women and children killed in the streets. Buildings burned to a crisp. More than two million Ukrainians fleeing their country, leaving all their possessions behind. This is a very serious time that needs to be handled by serious people. We know this. Joe Biden knows this. NATO knows this. So who do we send to Europe at a time like this? We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Well, you're in Europe now, Harris. It's the third time you've been. The first time, well, she put on quite a performance. We campaign with the plan. <laughs> uppercase T, uppercase P, the plan. We're expected to defend the plan. Kamala's second European trip didn't go much better. Last month, when she visited Munich, she didn't do a thing to discourage Ukraine from joining NATO. I appreciate uh, and admire President Zelensky's desire to join NATO. And one of, again, the founding principles of NATO is that each country must have the ability unimpaired, unimpeded, to determine their own future. No other country can tell anyone whether they should or should not join NATO. The possibility of Ukraine joining NATO, as we know, has been a driving factor of this war. Days after Kamala's trip, Putin invaded Ukraine. Biden decided to send Kamala again, this time to Poland, and the VP had trouble remembering where she was. I am here, standing here on the northern flank, on the eastern flank, talking about what we have in terms of the eastern flank and our NATO allies. Then, when she was asked about the fighter jet fiasco between the United States and Poland, she couldn't give an answer. It's a dynamic situation and requires us to be nimble and to be swift. I mentioned being swift in terms of accountability and consequence. We also fully appreciate we must be swift in terms of providing assistance where we can be helpful. I wish she could be a little more swift. Kamala did not meet the moment. No swagger, no passion, not even a big announcement or a a memorable verbal slap in Vlad's face. When asked about the refugee crisis, She first looked to Poland's president to answer the question, and then she just burst into laughter. I wanted to know if you think, and if you asked the United States to specifically accept more refugees. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) A friend in need is a friend indeed. Okay, I can first. You can't cackle while Russia wages war crimes. Snap out of it. And we're not the only ones saying this. This is a tweet from President Zelensky's former press secretary in response to Kamala's wacky laughter. Quote, it would be a tragedy if this woman won the presidency. Kamala definitely did some damage on this trip. Putin, as you guys know, is a former KGB guy. He sees a NATO alliance that didn't put its best foot forward today. 